Hey, is this thing on? Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to be talking about my hair journey, more specifically my hair journey as someone who chooses to relax my hair. So there are a ton of options in the hair community, um, but typically the most common ones are either natural, which means that there are no chemicals that are um, chemically straightening your hair, and then there is relaxed where the, there's a chemical compound product creamy solution that is put on your hair to make it straight. So I have relaxed hair. I actually have tried to go natural. I was natural for about six months, but I was not ready to commit to the big chop. And honestly, I'm really glad that I didn't because now like, I probably would have gone back to relax anyways, and then I would have cut all of my hair off. So I would say my hair had grown out about three inches or so. Um, so I had like two different textures of hair going on and it was just way too much. So I'm gonna cover everything from relaxing safely, relax or stretching, the vitamins that I use to grow my hair and keep my hair protected, and then also protective styles. My hair is actually currently in a protective style. So everything that's left out here is my actual hair, just my bangs in the front. And then the rest of my hair is within this ponytail. So protective styles are really, really great because it gives my hair a break. And then it's also just not out and about and really exposed to all the things that can damage my hair on a regular basis, like heat and different factors from the environment. So we're gonna go all the way back to the beginning. Um, first, is when did I get my initial relaxer? I was actually a teenager when I got my first relaxer. So my mom was very adamant about making sure that my hair was very healthy. So she did not put any chemicals on my hair. She kept it very moisturized and typically in different braided styles and things that she would do at home, which was so, so helpful. And I'm really grateful to her for that because I did not have all this damage to my hair from a young age from getting chemical relaxers. So once I was like, please, 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 let me get a relaxer. She did put a relaxer on my hair. Um, I think I was like in middle school, maybe about to go to high school. Um, and of course your first relaxer, your hair is not like actually straight, but I was like, oh look, my hair is so straight. It was not at all, but I really appreciate that she made sure that it was done safely and my hair was really in the healthiest state that it could have been. Um, and I was able to grow and mature in my hair as well before I was um, chemically altering it. So then after that, when I was around 18, I went to get a haircut. I was going to be in my friend's wedding um, and I got a professional relaxer done and I go to the same person who I've always gone to for my professional relaxers. I do not trust any other places with relaxing my hair. I don't know what I'm going to do when she retires. Like I'm literally terrified. I'm like, please work forever. <laughs> um, so Typically, um, I would go to her every few months and she would relax my hair. Now, I do do relaxer stretching. Some people get it done every four weeks, every six weeks. Personally, I don't think that that's healthy for your hair and I don't think your hair can grow and thrive under those conditions. So I stretch mine to about three, four months, sometimes even longer to make sure that it is healthy and protected. However, my hair has not always been healthy and we're going to talk a little bit about how that happened and what I did to make changes in that area and what I am doing now as well. So I did a big no-no and did a double chemical situation on my hair. I wanted highlights so bad, so I got highlights in my hair which lifts the color and then I had my relaxer as well. I didn't do it on the same day, so I thought that was gonna help kind of make sure my hair was still gonna be okay. However, it's just my hair could not handle all of those different chemicals. So it was like breaking out in chunks. We went on vacation and I was like, honey, how's my hair? Thankfully he was so sweet. He was like, it's beautiful. But literally like I would touch my hair and a clump would be in my hand or we'd be like at dinner and it would just fall all over the table. So definitely my hair was just like, please stop, you are not helping. So I let most of the color grow off and I didn't get any more relaxers during that time. And then I cut off the remainder of the color. So at that point I had a very short bob haircut. It was actually really cute, but it wasn't like I planned to get a bob. It was just my hair had broken off so much and fallen out so much that the only way to save it was to cut off what was left and try to rescue my hair. So the bob was a cute moment. However, from there, 
I was at a point where everything that was left was kind of like my new growth and I was in a healthier hair situation and I could grow it to a healthy length and healthy thickness and everything from that point. So I reduced the heat that I would put on my hair. I also was taking gummy vitamins. At the time I was taking the sugar bear vitamins, um, but honestly it's in the name. There's a ton of sugar in them. So I don't take those anymore, but they actually did work really well for my hair. And I increased my water intake. So literally your hair is like a plant. You water it, it grows. So I was drinking so much water. I would be like in staff meetings, filling up my bottle and everyone's like, okay, we'll just wait until she's done. I'm like, sorry guys, I'm on a hair journey. So literally it was like a joke around the office, like Amber, is today a hair journey day? Fill up your water before you come to this meeting. And I'm like, okay, I've got you. Um, so those were some of the major things that contributed to making sure that my hair was able to grow back. It was so uneven and lopsided, but it eventually all came together and I was able to do an even cut at a length that I was really happy with. Then what really kicked my hair growth into high gear was the fact that I was home during the pandemic. So I actually had time to sit and figure out what am I going to do about my hair and I had time to take care of my hair and do research. Like just, I was always go, go, go. And so I didn't really ever take a moment to figure out what I wanted to do. So fun fact, before 2020, I've never had a protective style. When I was younger, I did get like braided cornrows one time that broke off my hair because the hair that the braider used was not the best quality and my hair was like girl <laughs> we're gone also i had my friends help me cut out my braids and i'm pretty sure they cut off a good chunk of my hair at that time <laughs> but it's fine you live and you learn so during the pandemic i was like what am i gonna do like obviously salons are closed i cannot go get my hair relaxed and I'm not about to do my own relaxer. I don't really know what I'm doing. So I was like, I know how to braid. So why don't I learn how to braid with feeding in hair? So I tried so many different braided patterns. I did my own box braids. I tried knotless box braids, stitch braids, everything under the braided umbrella. I had faux locks at one point, everything that I could to just really make sure that my hair was protected and my hair loved it. It grew, it flourished so much during that time. I was also still taking my hair vitamins and drinking water, but at this point I had switched to the Miel brand of hair vitamins. Um, they're also gummies. This is still the one that I take. It doesn't have a ton of sugar, and I've noticed that it's really, really good for my hair, so I always snag it when it's on sale. So I really just poured into my hair and got to nourish my hair moisture, 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 like my hair is so dry. Um, I have high porosity hair, probably because of the chemical relaxer. So it was so important that I really hydrated, moisturized and nourished my strands. Now listen, hydration and moisture are not the same thing. So hydration is the actual like water that's being put into your hair, but that is not enough. You also have to moisturize. So if you're putting that hydration in, then you seal that in with moisture, typically in the form of a cream conditioner. And then I also do an extra sealing layer with an oil. I love the Moroccan hair oil. I've tried the Olaplex. I think it's number three. Theirs is pretty good as well. Um, there's also a very affordable oil um, from Argan Oil. It's the, actually no, it's from Cream of Nature. It's their Argan Oil. It has a little red cap and then their honey spray as well is really good to lock in that moisture. So when my hair was in braids, it was just completely drenched in hydration and moisture all the time. So I could make sure that it was not breaking in the braids and my actual hair was still getting what it needed while it was in that protective style. The same thing with protective styles like this one, I make sure that I oil my scalp and that my hair is super moisturized before I put anything around it. Because if you're just putting dry hair under fake hair, then when your hair comes out, it's still gonna be dry. Um, a couple of other protective styles that I really like are sew-ins, but I learned to do them myself, which I'm excited about, um, because getting them done, it was just too much tension. Tension breaks your hair, so make sure that you're very diligent about making sure that whoever is doing your protective styles is not braiding your hair too tightly. I also love to get tape-ins. Now, tape-ins aren't as protective, but they still are in the protective style family because the tape like sandwiches in your actual hair so when you're like putting heat on it and things your hair won't get as much of that damage but either way with any style anytime you're using heat um, just make sure that you are using a heat protectant that is such an important step um, i like the ag1 
iron spray and then there's a few different like actual spray ones that are good for wet hair so i'll link all of those different options down below you want to make sure that your strands are protected so that you can style your hair without the heat actually absorbing into your strands and causing damage so heat protectant is definitely my best friend and then of course protective styles honestly after this i will probably I don't know. I haven't decided yet. So another thing that has been really helpful that I have invested in now is typically I try to go get my hair professionally washed and styled every other week to make sure that it's continually being taken care of. Professionals know what they're doing. I'm actually looking for someone else in the area to do my wash and styles um, just for booking purposes. But the last girl that I used was really, really great. Just kind of hard to book. So I'm in the market for another person to do my every other week type of hair maintenance and then every few months i'll go to get my relaxer so it's not like i'm constantly relaxing my hair and causing that damage so it definitely takes a combination of a lot of different things um honestly right now my hair is not as healthy as i would like it to be so probably after i get my next relaxer i will be going back into braids for the spring summertime just to give my hair a break and make sure that i can put that moisture in as well also when it's in braids i use a braid spray so it doesn't get itchy or gross or anything and i also wash my hair in the braids so it's a lot easier to take care of a protective style than it is for me to style my hair every day and i noticed that it just has really benefited my hair so so much so water protective styling taking hair vitamins reducing the heat that i put on my hair um, relaxer stretching and then also trying to get my hair professionally washed and styled as often as possible has really made a major major difference for me so if you're like having relaxed hair and you're not sure what to do um, my hair is very thick and it's very healthy like when people do my hair they're like wow i can't believe your hair is so thick it didn't look that thick they're very surprised when they actually get into there so it really shows that it is healthy and it's continually growing um, i also keep my ends clipped as well so if you want to have relaxed hair there are options to make sure that your hair grows and stays healthy throughout that process i hope some of the tips that i shared in this video were helpful for you if you are considering it or if you've just been curious about all the different hairstyles that i have then here is some information for you thanks so much for watching and i will see you in the next jumpstart january please like comment and subscribe and follow me on instagram at affirmations with amber